Welcome to the Game In Report. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Jimmy Payliff. Wow. Yeah. Yes, welcome to the Game Minder Report. Jim is very excited. I am. I am. Super, uh, super excited. I think I broke myself again. Yeah, no, you're okay. It just it clipped, so I just have to flip a little switch, and then you'll be back on. And this is your weekly source of upcoming gaming news and information for, for the, the week, week of uh, September 26th. 26th. Yes, we both actually made sure we paid attention this week, so yes. we wouldn't get caught flat-footed again. No. Well, that's cool. So what's going on with you, Jim? Um, you know, just enjoying this lovely Cleveland day. It, it is, is a beautiful Cleveland day. Noah was calling out the animals two by two on the east side today. Yes, except for those unicorns. Yeah, they just couldn't get there in time. No, and no. the dinosaurs. Yep. And the and the uh, pixel fairies. Pixel fairies, indeed. Yes. Okay, so video games, which includes dinosaurs, pixel fairies, and unicorns probably in some Sometimes sort. in the same game. Yeah, you never know. You never know. What's going on? Uh, I guess some people lost their jobs again this week. Yeah, uh, PopCap. Uh, shut down their whole Dublin studio. Mostly this, known for games like Bejeweled. Bejeweled and um, Peggle. Peggle. That's a good one. Yep. Um, I'm sure that there's a... like a, a You know, that, little non-offensive, you know, sort of casual, fun, puzzle-y type games. Yeah, even before there was uh, touchscreen devices, these were your casual yep. Uh, yep. browser-based games. Exactly. And this came actually at the um, eve... Or not the eve, but uh, the aftermath, I guess, of the of PopCap laying off uh, people in Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the I know, I, this is hard to say. Not the cool thing, but the good thing is, is that under Irish law, you had they, they had, had to get to, thirty, no, days, 30 notice. days notice, which yeah. which is always nice. Um, yeah, it's always good when someone is not going to just be handed their walk-in papers and then be done. And I mean, yes, that's you know, it's a good protection. Uh, but I guess I, this also does come after they EA just added three hundred jobs. Granted, three hundred different types of jobs, right? Like, mostly technical support and customer service jobs. Correct. This, these were actually more you know developers and yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know if this is just uh, a sign of the times that yes, PopCap was the web browser based king, and now that you know they. I do know that they have popular uh, games in the App Store, mm -hmm. but it seems like other companies have taken over, like the Lucia and the um, Zingas of the world. Right, right. So I don't know if that's just a sign of the times or or, or what, but that's just uh, that's news of uh, gaming jobs, I guess, in, yeah. uh, this week. Unfortunate. Our hearts go out to those folks, and we hope they find work. Definitely, definitely. So in other sort of gaming news related to, you know, the changing world of games distribution, mm -hmm. um, there's a couple stories this week. The first one that caught my eye over at the Penny Arcade report is uh, this new Sony Day One Digital yes. stuff, which, um, you know, uh, Kuchera's take on it, I think, is probably a pretty good one. Uh, just that, you know, Sony in general, if you, if you look at sort of the picture that's been painted of Sony lately... Um, they're kind of scrambling, you know, they're, they're making some decisions that seem a little bit misguided. Yes. Um, this has actually, uh, uh not a follow up, but, uh, so Kuchera also had another article about yeah. Sony too, about how, even though they're coming up with the PlayStation slim, they're not, they're not slashing prices. It's actually raising prices because they're bundling. And Sony yeah. has said that the bundles is what people want. And I actually do not disagree that much for the with holiday Sony. season. I think that that is correct, but the 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 best correct version would have been to keep the price the same and add a game, not increase the price and add a game because that's right. what they did. You know, the the uh, on the PS3, I can't speak to the Vi the Vita, but on the PS3, there was a two hundred and fifty dollar version with like I think it was a one hundred and sixty gig hard drive. We just talked about this, and now the slim version has gone up to two seventy, and yes, it includes a game, but. I mean, if you can't, if if your price is going in the opposite direction, especially moving into the holiday season, I think while it is a more attractive product to put under mm -hmm. the tree, because then you can boot it up and you've got a game to play, it is more expensive now, and right. that and, I just think and is, the brick and mortars don't really make that much off of the the console hardware itself. Right. It's the it's the games, and now with this uh, PS uh, PSN Day One, yeah. So so just to sort of like recap what this is exactly, Day One Digital basically is a way for Sony to say. Boxed games that are going to be in the stores, you'll be able to buy via PSN download the day they come out. Mm -hmm. Like big, you know, AAA titles, not, yeah. you know, typical sort of PSN, NBA Xbox 2K Live, is games. one. And uh, what was there? Another one that, uh, oh, where you are, Cursor, where you are. Dishonored was another big one that I mm -hmm. saw that is uh, pretty popular. Um, my my little take on this, and I actually didn't read read this 
I was wondering if uh, Kuchero was going to, or uh, someone was going to mention about how maybe this will make game prices be lowered. Go to the brick and mortar sure. store, pay forty dollars, or you can do day one and pay the sixty dollars. Maybe the, the, here's the problem with that. This and this is going to speak to a much bigger conversation that I don't know that we have the time to cover. Sure, but it's a question of vertical integration. Okay, you know I'm, because. And it's, you know, it's already sort of rearing its head on the Apple side when you look at things like the App Store um, being the single point of distribution controlled by one company who also controls the hardware. You know, this idea of vertical integration where you are buying everything from one place, you know, the, the whole spread out nature of the retail chain and, you know, that had, okay, well, you've got shipping, you've got distribution, you've got printing, you've got all these various industries. And if all of those industries start to fall, sort of start to crumble under the weight of the fact that for your Sony PlayStation device, you buy everything via Sony, that is not as open and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just, it, it, it's competitive. Yeah, it's not competitive. Exactly. And so as a result, you know, competition then exists between the game makers, but, you know, the game makers are probably already guilty of price collusion anyway. Because right. they're well, all like, I just remember when the new generation came out, it's like, we've been charging $50 for games. That's ridiculous. Next generation, let's all agree to charge 60 And that's what they did. And it's just, you know. It, well, uh, I think, personally, I like it. And I've actually been thinking, you know, that the, the whole, like, streaming non-disc as far as, like, you know, whether at first it started with music, then I was hoping it was going to start with uh, I thought actually Blu-ray and HD DVD were going to lose to right. digital uh, ownership of, of movies and whatnot, but that seems to not be the case. But I would still like this for games. I, I don't like, you know, having, having discs. For some reason, I always scratch them, or my yeah. dog eats them, literally. My thing about physical games versus downloadable games is basically because because i i more or less agree i don't have a problem with downloadable games uh, it's for me it becomes a question of pricing you know i only spend 60 dollars on a brand new game because i know that i can trade it back in mm. and get a bunch of that back and now maybe i'm atypical you know maybe i'm not the kind of person who um is really the target for sort of new games like for instance i know john um one of our associates he buys games and just keeps them. And for a long time, I was like that too. Um, and, but I, I found that people who are like that tend not to buy games day, day one. They wait for a price drop, and then they buy them, and they just keep them. Mm -hmm. I know which games I want to play. I tend to pre-order them. I buy them. I play them, and then I return them or pre trade them. Pre-ordering is available in GameMinder. <laughs> yes, yeah, <so> always remember <laughs> to buy your games via GameMinder. Uh, it supports us and the show. Yes. So anyway, um, but yes, I agree with you. I think digital distribution, especially if it – pushes pricing downwards and the and, and again the problem here is that it's it's going to be the opposite it's like yeah, what I, you said mm -hmm. was like oh forty dollars in the store but sixty dollars online is not going to be like no. that because the, the the physical one is the one that's going to cost, cost more. more it's got the like i said it's got the shipping the printing the you know storage the warehousing the actual making of the of the disc exactly. and the plastic for the no i get it I well well that that that, that stinks i mean I mean, anything that, that can put a thorn in, in GameStop is, is fine with me. But there are independent companies out there that are doing just as good. Sure. That, and those are the guys, the little guy. That, but so, uh, I don't know. But we'll, we'll see. However, there is a, a – speaking about uh, digital distribution. Yeah. Are we doing that next? Yeah. Okay, sure. It. Um, there was a report out there. That, now, nothing has been confirmed, but uh, AT&T, like the U-verse, mm -hmm. and uh, Time Warner Cable and Comcast are all looking into uh, streaming games a la OnLive. Well, you know what's interesting about this? Um, obviously, we've talked about OnLive before, but um, have you ever gone to a hotel and you sit down and they've got that TV that has like the game controller hanging off and it's like play games now or or the remote control with the gamepad on the exactly, back of it exactly exactly that is what i immediately think of when i hear about cable companies getting into the game yeah direct tv already does something similar to this and yeah i thought i saw that i but i've never opened it yeah. i've never maybe i should you know and i'm sure it is a bejeweled game mm -hmm. a uh zumba not, what's that that thing with the circle and you have to hit the marbles i have no idea we've played it Circle thing, and you have to hit the marbles. It's, it's colored. And, like, do you want to try, try to get the line away? Oh, Zuma. Zuma. Yeah. yeah. Zumba's. I know Zumba's the workout. Yes. 
It is. So I'm mean, sure it's a, it's, a, it's basically it's all PopCap games. Well, <laughs> sure, and the, and and see, maybe this is not what this is actually going to be. Maybe this True. will be more of like an on live, you know, pick mm -hmm. a AAA title and stream it to your thing or whatever. But the second that I hear cable companies want to get yes. into streaming gaming, that was the first thing that popped in my mind. Yeah, anytime that I hear virtualized GPU technology, I always think of it's going to look awful. Nice. It'll look sweet. It'll look just like my old Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> only, maybe, only, only yeah. grainy and compressed. Maybe, maybe it'll be like GameCube. So we graphics. Yeah. Hey oh. Hey oh. Right on. Yeah. I mean, obviously, any sort of gaming is a positive. I think games are great. I love them. That's why we do what we do. Correct. But do we really want to start tracking games in GameMinder for your Directv HD dash four zero X? There's no way, <laughs> and there would be no way to know when a new game's coming out. It's probably yeah. just going to be like. Eight games on launch, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and again, I think a lot of it will come down to seeing what, you know, what the market does. Like, I don't know that there is a huge market of people who want to play games in their living room mm -hmm. who don't already either have some sort of console or are willing to buy a dedicated console. I mean, like, what's the controller going to be like for this thing? You know what I mean? Is it going to be a direct TV it, game it's controller? It's probably going to be a remote with the up-down menu Ugh, buttons. Yeah, that's not okay. <laughs> totally not okay. Not at all. Anywho, um, so just a couple of more things uh, to mention real quick about GameMinder. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a number of interesting milestones this week that we we're pretty excited about. First of all, yes. uh, are there are two top games right now. The most popular, most anticipated games in the system right now are Halo 4, Correct. obviously, and Assassin's Creed 3. Yes. They sort of go back and forth as to which one is the most popular. They're trading it off. Mm -hmm. And both of them cracked 20,000 followers this week. Yes, they did. Uh, which we think is awesome yes <laughs> I mean, thank that's a you. really that's a really great number um and i think the only reason it could is because i'm sure a lot of people noticed that we were having some issues last week we have finally moved over to a brand new hosting a cloud hosting yes. as it were yep. uh so any of the slowdowns or problems or timeouts or you know difficulties that you guys were seeing last week should be over now yeah not only with the the cloud uh transformation we also found a couple bugs that were uh slowing down people yep. that were even whether you were on the web or on your client we figured it out and it's super fast and it's uh I'm enjoying life because uh, yeah, all the stuff that you have to do is all, now everything that I do. Yeah, again. instead of waiting for uh, a minute or two to click a link, it's it's excuse me, fast as heck. Yeah, yeah, it's heck doing really well. Fast. Heck is super fast. Yes, it is super super fast. This is a G-rated show. Oh wow! And then how um, much pudding? <laughs> Two hundred and forty dollars <laughs> worth of pudding. Um, and then the final note about that is that I wanted to mention. That um, you know, September is almost over. Mm -hmm. Sometime we're hoping during the month of October, we're going to be going through a pretty big upgrade. And I just wanted to tease a little bit what might be coming. Oh, you're such a tease! I'm such a tease. A couple of things that are coming in uh, October, maybe November. One, we'll, we'll see. Number one, international release date support that's right jim yes regional release date reports. regional yes uh we haven't worked out the details of exactly how we're going to break those regions down yes. but it's something that we has been requested pretty much since the very first day of game minder and mm -hmm. it was a tough nut to crack and we're working on it we've been working on it for a year and we're basically throwing out our entire back end and putting a brand new one in place because the original one was just it was like there's a game and there's a date. Yes. And the new one is much more modular. It's much more expandable. And we're finally going to be implementing international. Yes. Yeah, so support. all those people that yeah, and there was a few actually uh, yesterday that are asking for your favorite uh, JRPG that just got announced because yeah. of the Tokyo Games. I cannot. Uh, I, I couldn't do it now or that now, but uh, soon I will. So stay tuned, and you'll be very happy. And so will I. Yes, we're very excited. Um, the second sort of large feature that we consider to be a large feature is the way that games are going to be followed from this point forward. Not mm -hmm. yet, but this is going to happen with the new update. As it is right now, you find a game by title, and then you follow the platform that you want to play it on. Correct. That is going to be changing pretty significantly. Uh, you're just going to follow the game title. And then you can then, in that game title, you'll be able to turn on and off platforms and other kinds of things. But um, we just decided that it was, especially for your reminder list, it's going to be a lot cleaner and simpler. Plus, our back end is going to be a lot more modular and expandable if we do it this way. So um, just sort of, you know, gird your loins and prepare yourself because there are some changes coming. But we think that these changes are going to be really amazing. And um, we can't wait to show them to you because I've been playing with some of the new stuff and mm -hmm. it's really... 
I think Game Minder is really about to get to the next level. We you think you're really going to like it. We think you're going to love it as much as we do. Yes. That's a reference, of course, to um, Apple's Joe. keynotes, yes. <laughs> which, yeah, iPhone 5. Yeah. Oh, I have mine, too. Yeah. It's over there, though, so it doesn't buzz. Because I'd be rude to have it buzz on a podcast. You're rude. I am. Anyhow, coming out this week. So uh, this week, obviously, uh, we as I said last week, we're finally starting to get into a lot of the big AAA titles. Last mm-hmm. week, it was Borderlands 2. That was a game. This week, uh, the big one that is uh, really strongly anticipated is Resident Evil 6. That is also a game. Number of other games we got coming out this week. NBA 2K13. Correct. I don't know why they still insist on using the 2K because 2K13 is the same number of digits as 2013, but whatever. 2K is the, the. I know what it is, Jim. It still sounds silly. Okay, just the name of the. I don't know. I, da, da. Sonic Adventure 2 and Bad Piggies. For anyone who doesn't know what Bad Piggies is, if you're like, oh, Bad Piggies, I, I mean, I recognize those other games. Bad Piggies is the follow up. Well, pseudo follow up to Angry Birds. It takes place in the same universe. universe. Yes, we talked about this in a, in a previous podcast. Not everyone has listened to every episode. Jim. Well, that's, that's what I was getting to. You should call the recap. I was going to say try and can, pay attention. You can go online to GameMinderReport.com and right. listen to all. See, I'm a company man. I try to promote what we have. You are. <laughs> You're a good little boy. There's other games too that are coming out, such as uh, The Last Express and The Little King Story. Right on. So, Jim, uh, which game newly added to Game Minder this week did you decide to follow? I decided to follow a PC game called Cube World. Cube World. Cube World, Cube, Cube World is by a developer uh, named Wally. 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 W-O-L-L-A-Y. Y. So I'm saying this. I'm going to okay. assume it's Wally. Anyway, what the game is, it's Minecraft meets Zelda. Interesting. Yes, it's got the um, what he calls is voxel based, which is yep. um, the the Minecraft like you mm-hmm. know, pixelated, mm-hmm. but it's in a, a vastly huge uh, world. Some people have said it's even like Skyrim esque to the world. Okay, but it's more Zelda like in the invent- adventure, you know, RPG, mm-hmm. and um, it, it uh, was something that uh, has gotten a little a buzz. And was buzz, a game, buzz. yeah, and was a game that uh, just got it added uh, yesterday, and already has a few followers. Awesome! So that is the game that I am following. Cool. How about yourself? Well, I picked this week uh, an iOS slash Android game called Revolt. Mm. And Revolt, uh, I'm just going to read from the little description here, radio control car racing themed video game released by Acclaim Entertainment in 1999. So this yes. is another one of those retro yes. remakes. I'm a little addicted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it was, I guess, on PlayStation, PC, and Nintendo 64. And um, now they're going to be releasing it, re-releasing it for iOS and Android. And um, I just, I need more cool little mobile games to play. You Correct. know, I've been, I've been so knee-deep in, like, God of War Saga. Mm-hmm. And I'm, getting, I'm about to finish those up, and I'm going to play Journey. And then I want to get some more sort of... Small, small time gaming to play. Yeah, gaming. So. Sometimes gaming is fun when you're you're using your head and you're fixing, you're solving puzzles and all that. And sometimes you just want to turn the brain off and just use the muscle memory and exactly and hit the finish line. Exactly. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for the Game Minder Report this week. To view the show notes for this episode or to follow any of the games mentioned today, don't forget to visit GameMinderReport.com slash 19. And to see when the newest games are listed, don't forget to follow Game Minder on Twitter or visit us on Facebook.com forward slash GameMinder. And to follow all your favorite upcoming games, don't forget to visit GameMinder.com or download the Game Minder app for iOS or Android. And finally, don't forget to buy all your games through our website or app. Every game you pre-order or purchase helps support this show and the service. Signing off for the Game Report, I'm Jim. And I'm Jeremy reminding you, don't don't forget forget to to play. play.